Today, I'm going to show you how I made this table saw cart right here for practically zero bucks. The goal of this video isn't to get you to make this exact table saw cart, but one that fits your requirements and with the materials and tools you've got available, whether that's a simple hand saw or a circular saw or some kind of other power tool. I mean, yeah, you could go out and buy the exact wood or exact tools I'm using, but as this is shop furniture, substituting for what you have, whether that's old flooring, fence pickets, or other scrap wood, is ultimately more cost effective. As this is shop furniture, it doesn't need to be that fancy. But to give you a bit of a starting point or something to work on, I'm going to include some free plans in the description below, and I'm going to post my cut list later on in the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Let's get into it. Before I could dive into my scrap pile though, I had to work out how tall I actually needed the table saw cart to be. And the way I achieved this was just stacking things and then balancing the table saw on top until the tabletop itself was at about waist height. It didn't matter that the saw was on a wonk here, I was just looking for a rough estimate. And I worked out in my case, I needed this to be about 60 centimeters or about 23 and a half inches. So I'm lucky to have a fairly extensive scrap wood collection because I bought a load of offcuts from a joinery business when it was closing down. Um, but for this project, I decided to use two spare two by fours I had left over from my workbench build uh, and about a quarter sheet of plywood as I had as an offcut. To measure out the tabletop size I needed, I simply set out some saw horses, rested the plywood on top of it, and then placed my table saw on top. And then I used a speed square and a straight edge to mark directly off the piece for the perfect size. Because I was doing this project outside, I didn't actually have a workbench to cut my plywood on. So I wedged two two by four scraps in between my saw horses to create a stable workspace that I could then rest my plywood top on. Just checking here that it's nice and secure. I then adjusted my circular saw blade to the point when it was barely below the surface of the plywood to ensure I only cut part of the way through the two by four and not all the way through. Then using a clamped on speed square and a straight edge, I cut out my plywood top as this was too big a piece to go on my small job site table saw. With the top then cut out, I grabbed a tape measure and started measuring out where I needed to cut my legs. Now remember to make these the height that you need for your table saw stand. Uh, for mine, because I'm not exactly the tallest bloke in the world, this worked out to about 60 centimetres. I made a quick initial mark and then used a speed square to strike a nice straight line over uh, that I could use to guide my saw blade. I decided to cut this out by hand, because I think it's important to keep my hand saw skills sharp. However, clearly uh, I was out of practice because I didn't secure the work piece properly. And as you'll see in a second, when I actually finished cutting this piece out, um, the grain ripped where I hadn't supported the work piece's weight on the bottom, uh, which meant I had to waste a bit of time then hand planing out the damage that you can see right here. Damage on the leg fixed, I then used that leg to measure out my next piece. If you're using a miter saw or a table saw, you don't need to do this because obviously you can use a stop block to measure the piece you need. However, this just allows you to measure exactly off the work piece if you're cutting these out by hand and minimize human error and make sure you end up with four square pieces. I then proceeded to finish cutting these legs out with a hand saw because I felt like I needed the remedial work after the mess I'd made of the first leg. This didn't take long though and ended up with four nice even pieces of wood. I then placed these out on my tabletop and measured out 
where the legs would go so that I could take my tape measure and work out what size I needed my stretchers to be. All this, of course, could be avoided with proper planning, but I kind of built this on the fly and decided to let the project evolve as I went. No messing around this time though, I use my circular saw to cut out these stretches. Now I'm trying to demonstrate in this video, you can build with whatever you have in your house. I do have links to all the tools I've used in this build below if you do need a bit of extra inspiration. And if you click those and make a subsequent purchase, I do earn a small commission at no cost to you. Pieces for the frame now cut. I then grabbed my super cheap pocket hole jig and clamped it on to the 2x4s. Never used pocket holes before, but I figured this was quicker and easier for a cheap piece of shop furniture than trying to do traditional joinery. I found the pocket holes really, really easy to drill, actually, I was pleasantly surprised. But this led me into a complete full sense of security because when it came to installing the screws in, I had an absolute nightmare that you'll see in just a minute. Pocket holes all drilled, I felt super confident and ready to assemble my frame. Now I put some glue on the end of my 2x4s uh, and then clamped them together before in starting to install the pocket holes. For the ends of the frame that you can see on screen now, this went really well and again filled me with more confidence that pocket holes are super easy and this is going to work just fine. Uh, unfortunately, when I then came on to putting the square part of the frame together as you can see here, I just fell apart and apparently forgot how to use a drill. Wasn't holding it at a good angle, calm your dirty minds. Um, then I wasn't supporting it properly. Then I was holding it in the wrong position to actually drill the screw in. And with you know much perseverance and swearing off camera, I finally managed to get the first few screws in. But then on the next go, I was physically bouncing off, as you can see here, and puncturing my wood with the end of my screwdriver. So all in all, a pretty frustrating experience for me, but it did go together in the end. Okay, I gotta admit it, fair play to all you pocket hole people out there. Um, drilling the holes was super easy, but clearly there's a bit of a technique to actually put in the pocket hole screws in themselves, which uh, I did not find particularly easy and definitely some more practice needed. Now, whilst I let this set for about an hour uh, for the glue to sort of start drying, I'd just like to take a moment to say that if you're enjoying this video, whether it's for the build content, my charming personality, or just watching me sort of get basic things like pocket holes wrong, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Uh, it will help share this video to other people so they can laugh at my pain too. Uh, and if you're enjoying this and you'd like to see more of what I do, I try to do as many basic builds as I can with basic tools and also tool reviews. Please smash that subscribe button as well. About 80% of my viewers aren't subscribed. Uh, and I'd really appreciate it if you're enjoying the content Click that button and the bell icon and follow along for my other videos. I've got plenty more coming soon. Right, once this dries, I'm going to attach the bottom stretches in much the same way. Uh, but what I am going to do, I'm going to leave them up about here, with a lot of leg beneath. And the reason for this is once I attach the wheels later, if I then find that the table saw cart is too tall, I'll just nip a bit off without taking away from the stretches. Cool. Get on with that. What I'm doing here might look a little bit clunky. But if you've cut things by hand and aren't sure if a piece is going to be square, just clamping a piece of wood on and then measuring directly off the frame will ensure that the piece you want fits in the right place. You're not going to be the wrong size when you attach it. I then took a level, put it on the two by four and just lifted it until it showed uh, in the center of the bubble and marked this and then went around and did all of that for my pieces. Quickly cut them out and then proceeded to start attaching them to the frame. Now, Due to the experience I had with pocket screws, I decided just to glue and clamp the bottom stretchers on. Spoiler alert, taking the quick and easy way out is often not the solution. And this came back to haunt me, which we'll get onto a little bit later. But before we get onto watching me fix my mistakes, First, I had to cut out the plywood that would make the bottom shelf of the table saw cart. 
I decided to use the actual table saw for this because the wood was now small enough that I could cut it down on there. Um, although I have to admit, I'm still learning how to use this table saw uh, and I have a healthy fear and respect for it. And I'm kind of planning to continue that fear and respect as I move on as that will stop me getting lax with my cuts and lazy. Then as I was measuring out where I needed to cut the corners out for my shelf to fit in, uh, I got a quick morale check from my quality control manager who was just making sure his workforce were all happy. Then using a jigsaw, I cut out the corners, super quick and easy. It could definitely be done with a handsaw as well, but I didn't want to do any more handsawing at this point. And here we have a class example of Alex learning his lesson for trying to cut corners. So I installed the bottom shelf off camera, mostly because I forgot to press record, uh, but I hadn't let the glue dry enough before I did so. Uh, and as I proceeded to whack the shelf in place with a mallet, I took off one of the two by fours uh, and frustratingly, rather than just popping out, it had dried enough to rip some of the wood fibers. So this is me frustratingly gluing it back in place and then rather angrily attaching some screws to make sure it didn't move. Lesson learned, but hey, now you won't make that mistake either. So um, you're welcome, I guess. And then I popped the top on, checked it all fit on the corners properly, drilled it, countersunk it, and put screws in, and the top was finally attached. Okay, so quick confession about these wheels or casters. I had every intention of recycling the ones I used when I knocked down my old workbench to build my new hand tool woodworking bench in there. Um, and if you want to see how I made that bench, I'll post a link to that video above me somewhere right now. Um, but my old workbench had casters on it and I had every intention of digging those out and reusing them. However, when I went to do that, uh, turned out I've only got three and I threw one away. Don't know where, don't know when, don't know why. So I have had to just go out and buy a set of wheels. So this build has no longer been entirely free for me, but there's no saying you haven't got some lying around on an old trolley or cart in your shop already or something in the house like a butcher's block that wheels around. Um, or that you even need to use wheels. Remember, the design is totally yours to make your own. Anyway, confession over. Let's get back on with it. With the wheels on, assembly was now complete. So I flipped it over, uh, gave it a quick spin to check all the legs worked and nothing was gonna fall off. And then we were on to preparing it to finish. Now how you finish is up to you. Sanding's totally optional, but for me, I wanted to knock off the rough, sharp corners so I didn't catch them on anything and potentially break them out. Additionally, you can choose to put a finish or stain on if you want. I didn't bother because this is just cheap shop furniture, but that's totally up to you. So that's it. Um, overall, I'm really happy with the build and how it turned out. And mostly I'm happy because I've made it out of scraps and offcuts. And it's barely cost me a penny to produce it. This shop cart is going to allow me to move my table saw in and out of my workshop without constantly hurting my back by bending over to pick it up. It's also going to provide me with a safe place to store it in the workshop itself. Additionally, it's got a shelf down here that can store accessories or other power tools that I may be working on. Because I don't have a dust collection system, I refuse to work inside with my power tools and always bring them outside. So having the shelf at the bottom here is going to make that so much easier because I can store accessories for the table saw or other power tools that I'm going to use when I'm building a project. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below what you think of my design or if you'd have made a better one. In fact, why not find me on Instagram and DM me a photo of your completed shop cart and the ones I think are best I'll showcase on my story. I'll make sure to leave a link to my Instagram and other socials below. I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you'd like to see some more of my stuff why not check out this video over here or if you'd like to see my review on this table saw why not check this one out over here. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Now at the start of the video I said I would give you the cut list I used uh, and as I've alluded to I built this on the fly uh, and made it up as I went along with the scrap I had. However on the screen now are the measurements of the pieces that I ended up with on the final product so if you want to take a screenshot of that or use it you're more than welcome to but just remember this may not suit the table saw that you have or it may not suit the type of table cart you want to build but please use it as an inspiration. I will try and get it so you can download these plans in the description below. I'm not that good with tech, so fingers crossed and wish me luck.
Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you on the next video.